Hey guys, it's John. This video is sponsored by Shudder. Shudder is the streaming service with the best selection of horror, thrillers, and supernatural movies, series, and originals. From Hollywood favorites and cult classics to original series, you can stream it all ad-free on all your favorite devices, including iOS, Android, Xbox One, Amazon Fire TV, Roku, and Google Chromecast. Shudder has the largest, fastest growing human curated selection of thrilling and dangerous entertainment. It's the Netflix of horror, and you can experience it all for just $5.99 per month or $56.99 per year. Get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes must-see titles like Vicious Fun, The Mortuary Collection, and PG Psycho Gorman, plus all the best horror documentaries and the hit creep show TV series from executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. To try Shutter free for 30 days, go to Shutter.com and use promo code John Wolf. A lot of you may know that I stream the game Dead by Daylight very often, and just this week they announced that their next DLC is going to be Hellraiser. If there's one thing I've learned this week, is that there's a lot of people out there who haven't seen Hellraiser. Well, recently I actually re-watched Hellraiser on Shudder, so if you haven't experienced this Clive Barker classic from 1987, you can watch both the first film and its sequel on Shudder. Definitely check it out, there's some really cool practical effects and some iconic body horror to be found here. It's a weird movie, but if you're a regular on this channel, hopefully you like weird. Try Shutter free for 3 days. Go to Shutter.com and use promo code JOHNWOLF. And please, don't cry. It's a waste of good suffering. See, once you watch Hellraiser, you'll be able to understand that reference, and many others. Hey guys, it's John, and welcome to my first horror movie tier list video. Basically, what I'm going to be doing in this video is going through a list of horror films and ranking them, at least the ones that I've seen, from tier S, really good ones, all-time classics, to tier F, absolute garbage. I'm very excited about this. Uh, I don't normally talk about horror movies too often on the channel because we're so busy playing horror games, but I have gotten lots of uh, questions over the years of, you know, what's your favorite horror movie? What's your top 10? What's your least favorite? Which ones do you think are underrated, overrated, that kind of thing? So I figured this would be a fun video to make, kind of a bit of a change in topic, but still horror related. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. This is a tier maker list that I found. I wanted to find one that had like a lot of movies on it. Tier maker lists are very hit or miss. Uh, I went through a lot of horror movie tier lists titles before I found this one and it was half decent so I went with it. Anyway, I'm getting impatient. Let's just go ahead and get into it. Now I'm going to introduce each film by placing them in the C tier but don't freak out. More than likely that's not where they'll stay. It's just a nice neutral space to put them. American Psycho. So this is actually one that I'm very fond of. It's, I, you could consider it more of like a psychological thriller than a horror film, but let's pretend for a second that we're not tedious sticks in the mud that are gonna nitpick a genre classification like that and just roll with it. American Psycho, actually one of my favorite films. I did parody uh, one of my favorite scenes from this movie, the business card scene, for an intro in a video. Some of you may have seen it if you've been around for a while. American Psycho, personally, I would put S tier. I really like this movie. I've seen it like five times. And uh, I think the first two times I really liked it, but I didn't quite get it. And I, I think I understand it now. I, I like that it's a bit open-ended at the end. I think a lot of people come away from American Psycho thinking that like the twist at the end is some kind of M. Night Shyamalan thing, but it's it's more of just like a satirical movie than anything else, and that's what I appreciate about it. I don't I don't want to talk anymore about it in case you haven't seen it, but I do consider it an all-time classic, and I'm putting it in S tier. Um, next is The Witch, and uh, I already spoiled it. I just put it straight in A tier. I really like The Witch. It's a very recent horror film. I think it was like five years ago. Basically, it's... Um, it's not for everyone. So in this movie, the way that they speak is very old and it can be off-putting at first, kind of takes some time to get used to. But if you can get past that, and I know that some people can't, it's a, it's a very creepy movie. Um, it, I mean, it's about witchcraft and more than that, like, I guess, um, puritanical 
you know, uh, religious obsession and fear. And I think that uh, Anya Taylor-Joy does a great job in this movie. Some of you may know her from The Queen's Gambit, but this is a bit before that. It's a film that understands the importance of subtlety and atmosphere, and it's just really cool. I like The Witch a lot. It's, there's, there's a lot of horror movies that have come out recently that I just didn't really care for, but this is one of them that I thought was pretty nice. I really liked it. Um, 28 Days Later. Okay. Uh, so, by the way, these are in no type of order. I assumed when American Psycho was towards the front that it was going to be in alphabetical order, but it is not. So, 20 Days Later. This is one of my favorite zombie movies, actually. 20 Days Later, starring uh, Killian Murphy, who I really enjoy watching. Peaky Blinders, all that stuff. Uh, 20 Days Later is a zombie movie, but I think it's it's better than the average zombie movie. Uh, it's been a while since I've watched it. Maybe 10 years or so, but I do remember liking it. I'm going to go ahead and put it in B tier. Like I said, it's been about a decade since I've seen it, so I don't have like a whole lot of commentary on it. But it is it is a cool movie. I, I might have to see it again soon to like revise my opinion and see if there's anything I'd like to add and maybe in a future tier list like this that I'd you know like to maybe extrapolate on. But yeah, 20 days later, you know, I would say above average zombie movie. A Quiet Place. So this is another one that came out pretty recently, and uh there's been Similar movies like uh, Bird Box, and uh, I, I watched another one recently that was similar to this too. Basically, the concept is that um, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt are living with their family in a post-apocalyptic world in which uh, the, the world's been taken over by monsters who can hear you from miles away, so you can't make any sound. So mu much of the film is done without dialogue. And it's pretty powerful. It's pretty original, in my opinion. I, I do like A Quiet Place. I'm not, like, head over heels for it. And I haven't seen A Quiet Place 2, which that brings me to an important point about this tier list. I'm not doing sequels. I'm going to try not to do sequels unless they're, like, incredibly noteworthy. So, just first films for, for me for this one. We've got enough to go through. A Quiet Place, though, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, in B. I did enjoy it. There's some like legit tense moments and uh, I actually did like the monster design a lot of times with how do I say this like American well really like Western horror film monsters there's like everything ends up looking kind of like Cloverfield <laughs> but I did like the design of of the monsters in this one I thought you know that they were pretty good there's nothing revolutionary there but I did like them, and uh, yeah, I'm, exi I'm excited to see the sequel, honestly. Alien. Okay, you know this one's not staying in C tier. Alien, actually, I'm going to go ahead and spoil this. One of my favorite horror movies. I rewatched it recently. It's still so good. Uh, Alien, directed by Ridley Scott, starring Sigourney Weaver in her breakthrough role. Uh, Alien is of an incredibly unique movie in cinema history and also a really good horror movie it's different from all the sequels i think one thing that i appreciate about alien is like its purity there's there's none of this like um excessive world building that happens in sequels you know like after this yeah i like some of the alien sequels but they really went went crazy with talking about like the origin of everything it's like sometimes it's nice to just have a bit of mystery and i think in alien there's a lot of mystery it's basically it's about this alien of unknown origin they don't understand its powers they don't know what it does everything is new to them and they're just kind of reacting in the moment and the atmosphere is incredible like the the monster design, obviously, H.R. Giger, legendary, and the way that they, like, just shot this, it was, it's, it's so good. I, I really think Alien, like, one of the best horror movies of all time, has to be S tier. Like, and I, and I went through and I rewatched like the Alien movies very recently, so I have a very fresh perspective of, on this. But it's, uh, it's one of my favorites. So good. I, if you haven't seen it, you're missing out. You gotta correct that. Nightmare on Elm Street. I think that's what that is. Some of these posters are a little hard to read. That is Nightmare on Elm Street, right? 
Of course, of course. Yeah, it's a very, very famous poster. I just wanted to make sure I got it right. So it's been a while since I've seen Nightmare on Elm Street. Probably seven, eh, six, seven years or so. I do like Nightmare on Elm Street more than the average slasher. I'm not really big on slashers. This may be rich coming from someone who spends a lot of time streaming Dead by Daylight, but uh, slashers just as movies aren't usually very interesting to me. However, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger has that supernatural aspect to it. So, like sometimes with, with other slashers, there there's um, there's a bit of supernatural impact, but this one it's like the main powers of of the serial killer are supernatural. So it's there's more of a focus on it. And this results in the, the movie being a bit campier than some other slasher movies that take themselves very seriously. Like, Freddy Krueger is... He's kind of a prankster, isn't he? So, for that, uh, I would put Nightmare on Elm Street in B tier. I know for people that are really into slashers, they're like, it's S tier, it has to be. Friday the 13th, S tier. Halloween, S tier. They're all... S I, I just... I'm, I'm just not as into them. I kind of prefer more atmospheric or psychological movies and the horror genre, but I, you know, I do like it and uh, I, I do think it's pretty solid. The Autopsy of Jane Doe. This is a newer, more recent horror movie. I think it's 2014, something like that. I was actually surprised by this one. I went into it not knowing anything about it. Um, other than, like, who stars in it. I believe Emile Hirsch is in this one. It might be the last one, the last movie that I've seen him in, actually. Autopsy of Jane Doe. Um, it, it kind of goes off the rails a bit. It starts off pretty slow, but you can see where it's going, and I think the payoff was pretty good. I'm going to go ahead uh, and put this in B tier as well. I don't have a whole lot to say on it. It's just, it's just a solid movie. I don't have many big complaints about it or anything. It was just fun. It's it's a slow burn, but it but once it ramps up, it really gets going and um you know, it doesn't hurt to have some good actors in there starring as well. So, Autopsy of Jane Doe, thumbs up from me. Cabin in the Woods, uh Joss Whedon's magnum opus, right? It was Joss Whedon. Um so a lot of people really really like Cabin in the Woods. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a parody of horror movies but it also is what it's parodying <laughs> like it it takes itself seriously a bit but it's also it, it's it's funny it's also like pretty scary there's there's a lot of emotions in this movie watching it it's uh it's got Fran Krantz in it, which is always a plus for me. He's a, a very funny actor. Um, I like that uh, him smoking weed makes him immune to a lot of things that happen in the, <laughs> in the movie. So when the other characters are saying things like, we should split up, he's like, what? Anyway, and it is a very unique movie, but I just, I've seen it like three times now, and I just, I don't like it as much as everyone else. I know some people put it put it in S, but I'm just going to put it in B. I, it's a, it's definitely above average. I do enjoy it, but I don't know. I'm just not as high on it as a lot of other people are. Child's Play. Um, so this is the first Chucky movie, and it stars uh, Brenda Hampton, who plays the mom on Seventh Heaven. So that's that was fun to find out. I remember when I came to that stunning realization, and I was just sitting there the entire time like, I can't believe she's in this movie. Um, Child's Play, though, I'm just gonna leave this in C tier. It's, I mean, it's Chucky, you know. If you like Chucky, you like Chucky. I'm not big on Chucky. I think he's just okay. But again, I'm not much for slashers. I, I do like that it's pretty campy and, I mean, it's about a killer doll, you know. But I just, I don't know, there's just other movies that I like a lot more, so C tier for me. Dead Silence. What the hell is this doing on here? Uh, this is F tier for me. I really do not like this movie. And I remember, I specifically remember watching uh, the trailer for Dead Silence when I was a teenager and thinking, this looks so scary. And then I saw it years later and I was like, this was crap. Like, I don't know. I It's been a while since I've seen it. Obviously, like, I don't know. It's been at least a decade. But I just remember being insanely disappointed by this movie. It's just, it was not scary. It's just... It's just one of those horror movies, one of those mainstream horror movies where 
there's a bunch of jump scares and not much else. Nothing in terms of like originality. I really did not like that movie. Don't Breathe. So this is a, another recent horror movie. It's about a guy who is blind and some teenagers invade his house and they have to be really quiet. They have to not breathe or else he'll hear them because he's like, I can't remember exactly. He's like an ex-Marine or something, but he's also like a bit unhinged. Um, don't breathe. Um, has some very unexpected moments in it. And if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in C tier. It's the kind of thing like, I just feel like for the concept of like, you better stay quiet. A Quiet Place did it much better. And it's just a much more enjoyable movie than Don't Breathe. Don't, don't Breathe feels a little... Feels a little bad in some in some spots. Um, it's not like I said. It's not horrible. It's just it's not great, in my opinion. Um, Drag Me to Hell by director Sam Raimi, who also directed The Evil Dead. Drag Me to Hell is um, about a creepy old lady who vomits on everyone that she comes across. It's it's a weird movie. Um, I'm also gonna put this in C tier. It's it. It's been a while since I've watched it. You're gonna hear me say that constantly throughout this video. I just, I don't sit around and watch horror movies all day and I certainly don't re-watch ones that I'm like, oh, that was a C-tier movie. But yeah, it's it's just okay. There's a creepy goat in it. There's a creepy old lady. Like I said, she vomits and everything. So if, you, if that's not your, your type of movie, then maybe avoid this one. Um, I don't remember much about it other than that. Speaking of Evil Dead, um, the original Evil Dead, very famous movie, uh, yeah, that's, uh, A tier for me. I really like the original Evil Dead starring, uh, Bruce Campbell, of course, as Ash Williams. They go to a cabin with some of their friends, and hijinks ensue is all I will say. If you've never seen Evil Dead, it's very worth it, just for the practical effects alone, and of course, Sam Raimi's, uh, amazing direction. Um, Sam Raimi's not a, a consistent tour de force, I would say. Uh, Spider-Man 3, for example. But uh, this is uh, some of his best work. So I really liked Evil Dead, the original. Exorcism of Emily Rose. Uh, I have seen this film. There are some films on the list that I am skipping because I have not seen them. Or I have seen them, but I don't really have like much of an opinion at all or I don't remember anything from it so I have seen Exorcism of Emily Rose I do remember something there's something about this movie that I remember very vividly and that's that um, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you smell burning toast that means evil spirits are about and I just thought that was so creepy and uh, you know that was like a decade ago or whatever, but I remember being paranoid that I was going to wake up and smell burning toast. Uh, with that said, it's a very typical exorcism movie. I'm not much for exorcism movies, aside from like the really iconic ones, and uh, this one's... Ah, it's not bad, I'm just going to leave it in C. It's, it's not a bad movie, it's just not like iconic or anything, and a lot of exorcism movies are all pretty much the same, this one's no exception. Final Destination, so this is a classic Dimension Films movie starring Devin Sawa. Final Destination is about the idea of some kind of supernatural force out there that um, wants you to die, and it will do anything to randomly cause it. It's basically about like entropy and this like, idea that you can't escape death. So I think it's got a cool premise and some of the deaths in the movie are fun. I found myself, I, I saw this pretty recently actually. I, I found myself when watching it not very compelled. <laughs> Especially um, towards the end, it got really like over the top. And I think the, the movie was at its best when it was being a bit more subtle. But again, this was, what, early 2000s? Not exactly the most subtle time in film history. Uh, I am just... This is this one was just okay to me. Final Destination, just okay. Friday the 13th, the original. So this is one of the first slasher movies. It takes place at Camp Crystal Lake. 
Also stars Kevin Bacon, surprisingly, before his prime. Friday the 13th is about a mysterious killer who goes on a rampage at a summer camp. What is interesting about Friday the 13th is that it films from the perspective of the killer uh, for much of the movie. So it's in first person perspective, which is unusual. So you don't actually see the killer um, for almost all of the movie. It's, uh, I mean, it's very effective in that way, but I also realized that it was done for budget reasons, so it's hard to compliment it too much for that, but it, it was original, and, I mean, obviously, you know, the 70s. Friday the 13th, though, um, it just, like I said, I'm not much for slashers. I do recognize the impact, and I appreciate it, but it, it's just a C-tier experience for me. Get Out. Get Out uh, is a recent movie di- uh, directed by Jordan, what is his name? Jordan Peele, that's his name. Some people may consider Get Out to be a bit overrated, but uh, there's one moment in the movie, uh, and if you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it for you. Uh, there's one moment in the movie that really makes it. I spent a lot of Get Out being like, this is solid, like this is a solid movie but I'm not getting the hype, and then there's a certain moment that happens where it just clicked, and I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna put Get Out A. I really like Get Out. I think um, I think it's not overrated. I think it's got great performances in it, especially from, from the leads. Um, Daniel Kaluuya, I always forget his name, and Allison Williams. Uh, both do an incredible job in this and I think that really it's really something that elevates horror movies when you get Like legitimately great performances out of your lead actors because a lot of horror movies can be carried by The special effects or the practical effects or like just the atmosphere the soundtrack Things like that the way that things are shot the directing, but uh, it really helps when you have good performances by your actors and uh, they both turned in like amazing ones. It, it really is a shame that acting is not awarded more in horror movies because they're horror movies, uh, but I'll save that for when I talk about Hereditary. Gremlins! Gremlins, very fun movie. Um, I'm, I'm definitely a proponent of 80s camp, and Gremlins is just a fun movie. It's, if you haven't seen it, I think it holds up well. The practical effects are really fun. I'm gonna put Gremlins in B tier. It's it's just a fun movie. It's comedy horror it tends to be underrated, in my opinion, because it's like, oh, well, it's not that scary. Well, you know, horror isn't just about scaring you. It's also about making you feel uncomfortable and, and doing outlandish things that uh, might make you laugh, maybe some dark humor. And I think Gremlins definitely succeeds at being on the lighter side of horror and making you laugh, but also like having some genuinely pretty creepy moments as well. I I like Gremlins. I don't, and in fact, you know what? If you don't like Gremlins, I don't like you. I know I put it in B tier and it sounds like I'm giving it a real like a really strong opinion on it, but hey. Halloween. So the original Halloween, the original Michael Myers um centered film starring Jamie Lee Curtis in uh I believe her breakout role. Halloween, you know, I said I wasn't much for uh, slashers, and that is true, but there's something about Halloween that I found more compelling than the rest, and I would like to put it in A tier. I, I do like it more than most slashers. There's, I, I and again, I can't really put my finger on it. I watched it on a plane, too, like years and years ago, so uh, that was my first viewing on it. I need to see it again, but I just... I do remember, even though I watched it on a plane, normally the movies that you watch on planes, you're like, yeah, well, you know, I watched it on a plane. You usually watch, like, some buddy cop movie or some awful comedy because it's not really the right environment for it. I don't know why I watched it on there, but uh, even through that, I was impressed with it and I enjoyed it. So, yeah, Halloween, iconic slasher, but uh, I like it more than the other iconic slashers and I'm not going to apologize for that. Hellraiser. Hellraiser is a kind of a slasher. I feel like it gets kind of lumped in with slashers, but it's mostly like a body horror movie. It's got great practical effects. Uh, in fact, I talked about it at the beginning of this video. <laughs> and yeah, I I actually rewatched Hellraiser again just the other day, and I I like it. I mean, it's it's a bizarre movie, and for a lot of it, 
you're kind of wrapped up in this subplot that seems kind of boring. Um, but then things just go completely off the rails and uh, great performances by um, the leads like Andrew Robinson, for example, who plays Garrick on Deep Space Nine. So I was watching it with Kimmy and we got about like four minutes in and I was like, he's from Deep Space Nine. He's the Cardassian Taylor. And Kimmy was like, how did you know that? So, um, yeah, I wanted to brag about that a little bit. Uh, Hellraiser, though, I would put Hellraiser in B. It is a classic. It's got some great practical effects, like I've already said. Um, and Pinhead and the rest of the Cenobites are just cool. Uh, Doug Bradley is Pinhead. He, he doesn't get a whole lot of screen time in this movie, but when he is on screen, he delivers. And, you know, Pinhead has, I, may, I don't know, maybe seven lines in the movie, but you remember every single one afterwards and of course there's the uh, concluding line which is oddly impactful i like hellraiser um there are 10 hellraiser movies so in my opinion if you've never seen it just watch the first one maybe the second if you if you are really into the if you really like the first one watch the second one because it kind of delves into the world a bit more but um yeah you know you do not have to watch all 10 just like with the rest of these slashers you don't have to watch friday the 13th part 12 or whatever, you know, you can just you can get by just watching the classics and then of course there's some sequels that are good But I'm covering the originals. and I'm getting off topic Hereditary I find movies like hereditary to be pretty divisive among people who are really into horror movies like They they watch a lot of them and they really appreciate the finer things. I'm gonna try to say this without insulting either side. Um, and then there's like the more casual watchers that like pretty much only the mainstream stuff. And I find that the latter don't like Hereditary and the former do. Hereditary is a horror film that may not scare you outwardly, but it does have some, in my opinion, um, very unsettling sequences. It's more of just an uncomfortable movie all around with some uh, incredible acting performances, mainly from Tony Collette, who I've deeply appreciated, dating back to uh, United States of Terra, uh, Little Miss Sunshine, you know, some of her earlier roles. She's a, she's a fantastic actress. And honestly, the fact that Hereditary didn't like sweep the Oscars, I think is, it just goes to show how horror movies are ignored. Uh, among uh, the Academy types, but I would put Hereditary at A tier. It, you know, Ari Aster, the director, is is a bit, not not everyone's taste really likes uh, <laughs> making, like, putting together scenes with weird naked people in them. Um, but beyond that, uh, I, yeah, I do like Hereditary quite a lot. It is a slow burn. It is very psychological, but it's really good. And the shocking moments are delivered perfectly. Um, it's just, it's really good. It's definitely my speed. Hostel. Hostel. Um, this Eli Roth um, torture porn film, as some may call it. Uh, I'm not really much for hostile or really uh, more of the gruesome horror movies. Like I said, I'm not much for slashers, but this isn't really a. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't really even call this a slasher. It's more of like a saw type, and I'm just not much for it. I'll be honest. I I saw the first and the second film, and I I, I just there's something about it. I guess I just don't get. I don't really get the appeal of these, so. Hills Have Eyes. Um, this is actually... Oh, this is the remake. I think. Yeah, Wes Craven, um, I believe, was behind this. Also, the guy behind Nightmare on Elm Street, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Last House on the Left, etc. So, um, yeah, not really much for Hills Have Eyes or movies like this either, where it's just... I feel like there's a lot of movies similar to this. Maybe they were inspired by Hills Have Eyes in the beginning, but I'm just not much for it, especially uh, the remake in particular. Um, Hush. Now, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that I love home invasion games, and you would think that I'd be into Hush. 
a lot of people really like Hush, but I just found it kind of boring. I, I think it's I think it's strongest in the beginning. Basically, um, I mean, it's about a woman home alone, um, guy with a mask breaks into her house. It, it, there's just I I felt myself really wanting more mystery with it, but. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this without spoiling anything. There's just the the way the the turns that the story takes I found unsatisfying and I feel like it kind of killed the tension and atmosphere and the mystery of it all. I don't know Maybe I was in a bad mood when I watched it. I'll have to rewatch it because this is a movie that's well liked by a lot of people but it just was not for me Insidious Insidious another controversial horror film, I've heard many people say Insidious is, quote, not scary at all, and then I would also uh, hear people say that um, the infamous Darth Maul jump scare is um, the scariest jump scare of all time. So very widely varying opinions on Insidious. Um, I actually didn't find Insidious very scary until like the last 20 minutes. The last 20 minutes, I think, are great and I think before that I just eh, you know it's okay it was nice to have on and pleasant to watch I guess Patrick Wilson I mean he's just in everything isn't he um, I, I I would put insidious either C or B and it's hard to decide by the way these aren't in any order I'm not I just put them in a tier I don't like put them like oh I'm gonna put Final Destination ahead of Friday the 13th that doesn't mean anything I'm just putting them in um I'll leave it in C I just I like I said I like the last sections of Insidious um everything leading up to that is just it's okay I do like James Wan though I believe James Wan directed this and I do think he gets kind of a bad rap um from I guess more purists in the genre but anyway speaking of that it follows this is a I I really like it follows and I remember I brought it up one time in a video and it's like people lost their minds when I complimented it I because I, I think I had just seen it recently in the theater and I was like go see it follows it's so good and then I got a lot of comments like it follows sucked and I'm like it did not suck what come on Maybe maybe it wasn't to your taste, but it did not suck. But you know that's how people are—they hyperbolize everything. Um, I'm trying hard not to do that in this video, but maybe I'm failing. It follows is about um, basically a <sighs> STD spirit. It's, it sounds really ridiculous when I uh, describe it like that. So basically, you have it following you and it never stops following you. And no one knows what it is, an evil spirit. Um, but basically the way that you get it to stop following you and to follow someone else, which by the way, when it catches up to you, it kills you, um, is to have sex with them. <laughs> so quite the creative premise. Um, I, But I don't like it based on that premise. It's, I just find I just find some of the scenes to be really powerful like the scene at school like I don't know I just there are so many moments where you see someone like walking like a zombie in the background and it makes you feel clever for being like that's it but the film doesn't zoom in on them and play a scary sound effect like look it's it's the scary thing it just lets you notice it on your own and it lets you wonder like is that something that I should be worried about as a viewer concerned for the character's safety or or what I'm gonna put it falls in a tier and you know what I don't want to hear any guff about it from <laughs> from some of you tedious folks out there it's good I I enjoyed it uh, I find for some reason like hereditary it follows insidious um, the Baba Duke and a few others that are like kind of trendier newer horror films tend to be very divisive I'm not sure why that is but um, yeah, I liked it, and you know what's great about it too? They haven't even made a sequel. They haven't ruined it with a sequel. So rare in horror films. Like, even, even Insidious had like, what, three or four sequels? Jeez. It. 
This is actually, I'm actually gonna be talking about both it. This is the original TV movie, hard to believe, starring Tim Curry. And I have it on Blu-ray. I really like this film. It is an uh, incredibly campy for an 80s film, and it is restricted by being a TV movie. I, bl I think that's right. Let me look that up. Okay, yeah, I did look it up. It is it is a uh, TV miniseries from 1990. So I think I said the 80s, but 1990. Uh, it is very campy, and it is, of course, restricted by being made for TV. But there's some really, like, any scene in this movie with Pennywise in it is a treat. Tim Curry turns in a fantastic performance. Um, I do have a couple complaints about it, unrelated to it being a TV movie. Um, and it's that, and this is a problem that I have with the, uh, the new version of it as well. I find the first half way more compelling than the second half. I find the first half were their kids to be way scarier and way more interesting than the second half when they're adults. So if you don't know, it is separated into two parts. Part one, they're kids. Part two, they're adults. And uh, they all meet up together again and Pennywise harasses them at both stages of their life. It, uh, it, it's, it's way less compelling, I think, uh, uh, in the second half. And I, I try, I try to like the adult characters, but they're just not as, they're just not as interesting as the kids, I'm sorry. With that said though, I, I think I think it's B, B for me. O only B because it is 30 years old and it was made for TV, so just as a horror movie, it, it's, it's important to keep that in context, but even with the context, it's like, eh, okay. I can see how this would have been better in 1990 at the time. Uh, in 2021, it's, it hasn't aged magnificently. But again, Tim Curry's performance really carries it. So that brings us to the new version of It with Sarsgaard. Bill Sarsgaard as Pennywise, who I think did a great job, you know? Yeah, Bill Sarsgaard. Sorry, I had to look it up and make sure I knew what I was talking about. Um, this is another instance of I really liked part one more than part two. Um, and, you know, I like a lot of the actors that are in part two, like Bill Hader. Come on. How can you not like him? Um, but uh, I still am going to put it in A tier. I think just it's just a lot more horror than um, than the 1990 version. I do. I do like quite a few moments in it. There's even one moment where there's like it looks like a monster designed by Junji Ito. It's very creepy. It's uh, it's cool, though. I I like it. I know that some people were really put off by the ending of part two, but like, I don't know. It's it's kind of a bizarre movie and I like weird things. I like it when movies get a little weird and they get a little off the rails, do something kind of unexpected that leaves you feeling kind of uncomfortable and bewildered. And uh, you know, so I'm, I'm totally cool with the ending to part two. Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers. Movie that a lot of people like. Um, I'm just gonna put in C tier. And uh, it's the the Jeepers Creepers monster. I can't remember the name of it. Does it have a name? The Creeper or something? It's cool. It's just okay. Um, and a lot of people have been clamoring for Jeepers Creepers to be in Dead by Daylight. And I think, I think it's one of the only uh, movie monsters that the Dead by Daylight team has been like, we're not going to do that. So <laughs> I don't know. But there are some Jeepers Creepers fans out there. It's not a bad movie. It's just, I don't know, not one of my favorites. Midsummer, another Ari Aster film, the director of Hereditary. Uh, this is a film about some friends who go to visit a... Um, what do you call it? Uh, kind of a kind of a cult-like society out in the boonies, and it, it reminds me a lot of The Wicker Man. If you like The Wicker Man, um, I would advise you to watch Midsummer because it's it's similar in a lot of ways. It does have that kind of divisive Ari Aster. Uh, direction where suddenly people are naked for no reason and like chanting and stuff like that but <laughs> but beyond that like I I actually the more I think about it the more I really like this movie like after I watched it I was like that was a wild ride 
was basically my only response. But the more I think about it, the more it, to call it enjoyable is, <laughs> I don't know if I'd call it enjoyable, but I, I, I would put it in A tier. I just, I don't know what it is about, about Ari Aster, but the way that he directs movies, I just enjoy. So I don't know what that says about me. Paranormal Activity. So this is a film that kind of revived the found footage uh, genre for that Blair Witch project kind of started. Paranormal Activity, um, I realized that it was made on an incredibly small budget and one of the most impressive things about it is that it really does just look like, you know, they just recorded this and send it to theaters. So they they really nailed the amateur feel of this movie of people just recording a ghost in their home. I I did find the small budget frustrating in parts though cuz there were some moments in the movie where I was like, "Okay, come on." Yeah, you could have done a little bit more special effects here or, you know, you could have I don't know. It just it did feel kind of cheap in some instances, I guess is what I'm saying. And I know some people really like this style of movie where like you don't see anything, at least from what I remember, you don't see anything and it's all just like you can just imagine whatever you want. Uh, I like there to be something of a payoff and I don't remember there being much of a payoff from Paranormal Activity. Uh, We're not going to talk about the sequels because oh my god, boring, boringville is what that was. Poltergeist. I actually saw Poltergeist for the first time pretty recently, and I don't know. I expected something completely different than what I got. Uh, It should have tipped me off that it was directed by Steven Spielberg, but it didn't. And for some reason, I was expecting like some kind of some kind of like exorcism like film, like traditional kind of more horror I guess but it's a good movie it's just its relationship to the horror genre is kind of tangential it's more of like it's more of just kind of like a, a blockbuster movie it, it like hits all the beats of like Spielbergian films of like everything's big and loud and it it just doesn't have any of the subtlety that for some reason I was thinking a film called Poltergeist might have. It starts off in the beginning kind of that way, like, you know, the Poltergeist is just like moving a chair around, and I liked that. And then the Poltergeist just goes off the rails with things, and like I just finished saying, I do like when that happens, when things are unexpectedly going crazy and getting bizarre, Um, but I I don't know, I just, I think as a whole, I'm gonna put it in, in B, just because it was a good movie. I just, I was, I guess I was taken aback by how not scary it was for me. Um, so there's Poltergeist, right? Saw. Saw is a movie. <laughs> I'm doing a great job. Uh, how long do we have to go? Saw is a movie starring Carrie Ells. And actually, the I believe the screenwriter is opposite him. It's a movie about two guys in a room who are chained up, and they are given clues uh, for why they are there and their relationship to each other and how they can escape. I find this to be the best Saw movie. I'm not going to talk about all the sequels, the, the ten sequels or whatever it is. Uh, I do like Saw, actually, quite a bit. I think it's got some... Some interesting, like, psychological horror elements to it. It's a bit of a thriller, and I find that to be the most fun part about it. Some people think of Saw as just, like, torture porn, you know, it's just, it's just people, like, getting their legs sawed off and, you know, just screaming out as razor blades, like, cut up their bodies and stuff. I, I, th- I find that th- that's true of some of the sequels, but I do like the original Saw, um, and... You know, Carrie Ells is in it. Danny Glover is in it. Come on. How can you hate any movie with Danny Glover? That guy just, like, steals the scene anytime he's on screen. 
So yeah, I like the first Saw, and uh, I think it's got more to it than might meet the eye for a lot of people. Scream. I did say that I wasn't much for slashers, but I really like Scream. Um, I don't know what it is about it. I think it's like, it's like that sting of satire that it has where it's not taking itself seriously. It, it has that kind of a blase 90s comedy vibe to it, but it's also a slasher movie. And it can be pretty brutal at times. I mean, um, early on in the movie, you see someone strung up on a tree by their intestines. That's pretty <laughs> gnarly, you know? And I like that there's... One of the things I like in Scream is that uh, they play on this idea that, like, anybody can be Ghostface, and it could be somebody that you know, you know? Uh, these serial killers, you know, they could be, like, your friend. And... Uh, I, I do find the the twist with Scream very compelling. I watched it again recently because I was like, maybe it's not as good as I remember it, but it is. I I think it's it's very uh, a very charismatic movie, and I know not everyone likes Ghostface as like a slasher icon, you know, because he's Ghostface is just kind of he spends a lot of the movie getting his ass kicked, and <laughs> it's like. Not 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 as quite as scary as these icons like Michael Myers and uh, you know Pinhead. I don't know uh, who else. Jason Voorhees. Uh, but I I I mean I'm sorry. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I really like Scream. I I think it's just it's got the right amount of self awareness, but but it also delivers on like the horror and the slasher brutality. I just think it's a very unique take on things and it's an, a perfect blend of like satire, but also, you know, slasher horror. So I'm putting Scream up there. We're not talking about the sequels, but most of the sequels, pretty solid. Most of them. Uh, Silence of the Lambs. You want to talk about acting and horror movies? Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins. Power Duo. I believe this is one of the few horror films, too, that won Oscars, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know. I don't have the Wikipedia page up right now, but Silence of the Lambs, so good. So good. Like, as I don't quite feel so strongly about it that I want to put it in S tier, but Silence of the Lambs, like, it's just, it's a classic for a reason. It's got stellar acting, and like I said, when you've got like a good movie with a good concept, good direction, good writing, good effects and everything, but then you've got also got good acting, it just really elevates it. And um, yeah, Silence of the Lambs uh, deserves all the accolades that it gets. Not overhyped at all. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, pretty, one of the very early slasher movies directed by Toby Hooper, who also, Directed Poltergeist, I believe. I called it Steven Spielberg, but I think... Wait, was it directed by Steven Spielberg? Oh, okay, I just looked it up. So, um, just to correct something about Poltergeist. Uh, Poltergeist was written and produced by Steven Spielberg, but directed by Toby Hooper, who also directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. Two very different films, by the way. Like, incredibly different. Texas Chainsaw Massacre has got Leatherface in it. Bubba himself. And... It's, I mean, it's just a solid, it's just a solid slasher. And, um, I, th I find that, uh, it's, it's more compelling as it goes along. At first, you know, it's about a bunch of unlikable people getting chased around, uh, by a guy with a chainsaw, but you get pretty invested towards the end, surprisingly, at least in my case. And, uh. Yeah, it's pretty good. Not bad for 1973, I believe. Just off the top of my head. The Birds. We gotta talk about a couple Alfred Hitchcock movies. Uh, the Birds has not aged well in terms of its effects. But just in terms of its direction, Alfred Hitchcock, like... You know, he's... He's notorious for a reason. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this also in B tier. Uh-oh, we're starting to get pretty fat here on the tier list. That's okay, we can, you know, the only person that's in, uh, the only person, the only movie that's in F tier is Dead Silence, and we can just 
We can just leave them off the screen. <sighs> okay, there we go. Yeah, the birds is basically, it's about birds terrorizing people. Um, maybe if you've seen the awful, awful movie Birdemic, uh, it'll hit kind of different because it's clearly inspired by the birds. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a classic for a reason. And is it still scary? Uh, no, but it does. You, you can see what's there, you know, like from just a historical perspective of things and it is a very early horror movie and it's just it, I think it is still carried by Hitchcock's direction so I'll put that in B tier right there um the Blair Witch Project this is not the first found footage horror film but I believe the one that really set off the craze that was around for a while um it it definitely does feel like an amateur product uh, project. They they thoroughly succeeded in that. I just I'm just not. I've seen it two or three times, and I I like a lot of the behind the scenes stuff I've learned about the the movie and about how like the actors in it were. I mean it was they they didn't know what was going on, and it really translates well in the in the film like the fact that they got like really raw visceral reactions out of the the people in the film and i respect a lot of that about it uh but just as a viewing experience i it's it's very similar to paranormal activity for me i just i feel like there's not enough payoff and it does feel a little too cheap sometimes for me and i i know that this is considered a classic and it's considered like quote so good but it's just one of those things I just, I've tried, you know, like I said, I've seen it two or three times. It's just, it's, it's not that interesting to me. Um, like I said, I appreciate a lot of the thought that was put into it and I respect it, but as far as enjoy it, enjoy watching it, not really. The Conjuring, The Conjuring, back to James Wan movies. I actually, I, The Conjuring is another film series that it, it proves to be kind of divisive between like uh, horror purists and like the mainstream casual crowd. Uh, I'm going to put The Conjuring in B tier. I do like The Conjuring quite a bit. Um, you know, Patrick Wilson, again, he's in every movie. Uh, <laughs> but the, Conj the Conjuring, I think, is, it's, it's one of the few exorcism movies that... It feels like the stakes are really high. A lot of times with the Exorcist movies, I'm just like... I find it hard to get invested in the scenario that's going on, but I... There's something about The Conjuring and its sequel that... Uh, I won't talk about the sequel, but um, I find the, sequ the sequel's Nun to be uh, a very good monster, and it's too bad that... They got their own spinoff that apparently wasn't good. I never saw it. I'm never gonna see like I'm never gonna see Annabelle or The Nun or these like Conjuring spinoffs. But I do like the movies uh, themselves. I just feel like I feel like James Wan has a great sense of drama. That's something that I appreciate about uh, both Insidious and uh, The Conjuring. Is I feel like there's just like a a very refined sense of drama with it. It's like you know the the jump scares hit at the right time in my opinion and it's like everything is calculated to deliver the big moment and i like that i feel like i feel like um they're very good at delivering payoff i think that conjuring and the conjuring 2 have have great payoff moments and I, that's that's not a, an opinion that a lot of people share I, some people prefer horror movies with no payoff. They don't see anything. Uh, nothing's there. They just like it's all in their imagination. They they're I, I I just don't share that. I really want there to be some kind of reward for because to me and I mention this a lot when I'm playing horror games. Tension and atmosphere with no payoff is like you just get blue balled. So I I do appreciate that about um the conjuring i feel like there's there's a lot of punch in there so i hope i'm explaining that correctly the descent 
The Descent is about, oh gosh, wait, I always get this movie mixed up with another one that's about a cave. Okay, good, I, I have seen this. The Descent is about um, six women who go on a spelunking expedition to explore a cave, and they find more in the cave than they bargained for. I will just say that. Uh, I get this mixed up with like, the ruins, I think, or there's a couple other, the cave. There's a couple other movies that are not nearly as good that I get this one mixed up with. Uh, the Descent, very, it, it's one of those uh, movies that preys upon a specific phobia. If you feel, if, if claustrophobia is a thing with you, then this is gonna do a number on you. I'm gonna put it in uh, B. Do like it, do, do like. The Exorcist, oh. Oh, The Exorcist. The Exorcist, very classic movie. Um, I find one of the problems with uh, exorcism films or any kind of like ghost horror is they just like straight up do nothing to some people um, who are just like, well, that didn't exist, right? Um, I think if for people that grew up with a religious background or people that are religious though, uh, these are very scary movies. And I grew up religious, and, you know, I grew up with people telling me that The Exorcist is the scariest film of all time. You know, I read about how people in the theater, like, fainted and shit. You know, it's, uh, it's an iconic horror movie with uh, an outstanding performance by Linda Blair. She's so good in this movie. Um, I... We'll put Exorcist in, it was like between A and B for me. I, I, I can't like justify not putting it in, in A, I don't think though. It's like, it's, it's not one of my favorites really. I would put it in low A if I were ordering these, but um, just, I remember seeing the face of evil for the first time in that movie and just being like, that's enough for me. <laughs> I don't need to see anything else. Just seeing that, what was it, Pazuzu thing, or uh, the face of, I just, pff, I was like, I'm out. This sucks, get me out of here. Exorcism movies are also, they're very like emotionally exhausting, because there's a lot of screaming, and a lot of like, getting thrown around the room and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a 70s horror movie. They, they really had a lot of good ones from back then. Uh, but I just, as far as exorcism films, it's one of the best ones, perhaps the best one. Um, but I don't like it enough to be like, it's all time fave. The American Grudge. So I've never seen, I've never seen the Japanese Grudge. Uh, but I, I will put, I will put this in C. Why did I put it in B? What's wrong with me? I just, I, there's something about the uh, kind of thing that just gets me, even though it's, it's, it's not like, it's not good, but there's something about it I still like. I find it charming, I guess. And, um, you know, like I said, I haven't seen the, the Japanese version, but I, I do find it charming and, and kind of weird, and I like that about it. Um, speaking of westernized adaptations of Japanese movies, I have not seen Ringu, but I have seen The Ring, and uh, I, will, I will put The Ring in B tier. I think the, the concept is solid. Everyone knows that one scene where she climbs out of the TV. I would I would say The Ring is like kind of more of a thriller than anything, but you know, th thrillers are horror movies, right? It's just, I, I just mean that it's, it, I guess it's it's got more of a sense of, uh, I guess I just mean that it's got more of like a psychological sense of subtlety to it than, than a lot of other mainstream horror films. So uh, yeah, The Ring, you know, not bad. I don't mind it at all. The Shining, directed by one of my favorite directors, Stanley Kubrick, and I'm already scrolling up, so that's probably gonna spoil some things. Uh, the Shining is my favorite horror movie of all time, so there you go. Everyone, everyone has been asking, I try to answer when I see the question, but I love The Shining. The Shining is not for everyone, it's very long. Kubrick loved making really long, really drawn out movies, but I find that the pacing, while incredibly slow, does succeed in creating like 
an amazing tension buildup. And then the payoff is what sells the whole thing. It's like you spend so much of the movie hours, tension, 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 and it just slowly ramps up into crazy town. You know, it's like Jack Nicholson, one of my favorite actors, just turning in a performance of of a lifetime in his storied career. And uh, Shelley Duvall, you know, I feel bad about everything that I've read about Shelley Duvall having a tough time um, being um, accosted by Kubrick on set and everything. Uh, but she, she did a great job as well, just the acting again it elevates the entire thing and it's just it's just really good i, I don't want to really like talk too much more about it because i feel like i would spoil something it's it's about a family that goes to um stay at the overlook hotel during the winter um to kind of just maintain it and they end up having a rough time <laughs> so yeah the shining uh one like my favorite um, horror movie, one of my favorite Kubrick films, uh, but not my favorite Kubrick film actually. So that should tell you something about his films. Oh, we're gonna be on an S tier spree here, cause the thing is next, and I'm sorry, but the thing is just, uh, it's so so good. The practical effects in this movie are arguably, like, best all time. Like, I can't believe how good the practical effects in this movie look. If you've never seen The Thing, it's it's kind of similar to Alien, in that it's about um, uh, this crew that um, are invaded by a completely unknown species, uh, a, a malicious entity. And uh, what's scary about the thing is that it can disguise itself as human. So, you know, you can make your Among Us jokes or oh, whatever, ooh, red is sus. Uh, it's, it's like that though. It's got that kind of paranoia to it. And, you know, Kurt Russell is in it. It's just, it's so, so good. It's, it's, it's one of those movies that, although it's not my favorite horror movie, it's definitely up there. If, if I see like a tier list and the thing is not S tier in it, I immediately judge that person very harshly. It's like, I, I like, I get it. If the shining is an S tier for you, I get it. It's, it's a real slow burn. It's really long, you know, very psychological. The thing though, like if you like horror and you don't like the thing, I don't know what you want. Like, I don't know what you want out of a horror movie. So uh, if that, hopefully that's a glowing review enough for if you haven't seen it to see it. Um, just again, the practical effects, the monsters. <sighs> I say monsters, it's really just one, but um, yeah, it takes a lot of different forms. Very exciting. Train to Busan. Train to Busan I actually um, saw not too long ago, like last year. And I'm not much for zombie movies, you may have noticed. I, a lot, I've i skipped a lot of zombie movies. Just because uh, like there's a lot of zombie movies on this tier list, but I just, I tend to not really like them that much or not really have much to say. It's just like, eh, it's a zombie movie. Uh, I think Train to Busan though is a bit transcendent. Transcendent? For the genre, um, it's a Korean film. I hope I got that right. Korean film? Yes, it is. I just looked it up. South Korean, as if that needs to be clarified. Train to Busan, uh, I, I'm, I'm just, I think it's really good. I think that Train to Busan has this kind of element to it of class warfare that you don't quite see. And it has, it has like a societal commentary aspect to it that you don't see a lot of other zombie films or really any that come to mind for me because a lot of times with zombie films it's just like pure id it, you're just like watching people bash zombies brains in and like you know while rock music blares in the background or something there's 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 a bit of that in this there's a bit of like that catharsis of just like die criminal scum kind of thing you know because it's like 
I don't know. I, I could talk a lot about the psychology of zombie films from my perspective, but uh, I think a lot of the uh, payoff for watching a zombie film is it's just like, oh, you're gonna try to murder me? Well, I can do whatever I want in self-defense, so I'm gonna bash your brains in with a hammer. You know, it's like, that's typically not something you would get to do to another person, but if they're a zombie, so fuck them, right? And, and Train to Busan really, I think, I think plays on this uh, to an uncomfortable degree at times, and it's just really good. I also, I, I really like um, movies that take place in one setting. Like, I, especially trains, there's something, something powerful about a movie that just takes place on a train. Like, I really enjoyed Snowpiercer as well. So, yeah, I like Train to Busan, and it's also on Shudder, so I've shouted it out before. Troll 2. I don't know why Troll 2 is on this list. It's very weird. Um, however, uh, I'm not going to tier it just because it is a straight-up comedy horror movie. It's so bad it's good, but I did want to talk about it. I'm not going to tier it, but I did want to talk about it. Uh, if you haven't seen Troll 2 and you like bad movies, it's like the it's the Citizen Kane of bad movies. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's about goblins, first of all. There's no trolls in the movie. Um, and this, whatever this thing is on the poster, that doesn't appear in the movie. Um, goblins that are a vegetarian. So they turn people into vegetables and then eat them. Um, yeah. Us. This is another Jordan Peele movie. The director of uh, Get Out. I think... I think after it's so hard to follow up Get Out because it's such an impactful movie. And I think a lot of people were disappointed by Us. However, I I did I did enjoy Us quite a bit. It's not quite as good as Get Out. Obviously, it, it cuz you know, Get Out just had that one moment and that primary message to it that uh, that really elevated it to the next level. And Us doesn't quite have the same thing. But I think it was still very good, and I I enjoyed it quite a bit. It does have um, a bit of a thriller twist to it, and I think there's also like satisfying payoff, which again, if you haven't noticed throughout this video, big deal with me. Uh, yeah, I liked Us. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it, honestly. Bone Tomahawk, strange movie to have on this list. Um, Bone Tomahawk is uh, who directed this, Craig Zoller, uh, stars Kurt Russell, and this is a brutal movie. I wanna, I wanna really harp on that. Um, this is a brutal movie, <laughs> and it's, it's basically, okay, so it's a Western, and you might think a horror Western. How does that work? So, Basically, what's happening in the movie is um, it's these Western guys that are out for revenge against these troglodytes, um, cave-dwelling American Indians, uh, who are kind of a isolated tribe that are cannibalistic and have been capturing people from their town and it's just a really brutal movie. Um, part of me really likes it, <laughs> just because you don't often see um, movies that are quite this uncomfortable. Uh, I, I will put it in in B, just because it's it's quite the it's quite the experience. Um, Bone Tomahawk. I'm trying to figure out. There's a couple other actors in it that I like. Um, I can't remember who they are at the moment, but yeah, Kurt Russell's the main guy. And uh, I, I cannot emphasize enough, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Split. Why is Split on here? Split is uh, an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Um, and some people don't like it because of its portrayal of DID. And I agree with that, and I can understand that. Um, you know, I've talked a lot in my videos playing horror games about how it gets really tiresome seeing somebody with multiple personality disorder, uh, dissociative identity disorder is the correct modern term, um, to be displayed as like a source of horror, someone to be afraid of, and you know, mental illness just in general is, uh, uh, 
you know, negative, completely negative trait, right? Uh, and my perspective on Split is I'm, I don't think that this movie is malicious in that way. I think it really attempts to make the main character, who's brilliant, uh, brilliantly portrayed, by the way, um, by James McAvoy. It took me a second to remember his name. Brilliantly portrayed by James McAvoy. Um, I, I think it really uh, tries to make that character like a fully fleshed out three dimensional character. It's like they're not just their illness and there's more to them than that. And there's positive things to them. They're, they're, uh, you know, they're not just, you know, scary, mentally ill man. Um, I do think it's, it's a fun movie <laughs> with, with all that said, I know it sounds weird. It's just, it, it's, it is interesting just for the acting alone, I think. Um, and, I do think it's well directed. Uh, so complaints about that aside, I think I will just leave it here in C tier. It also has Anya Taylor Joy in it. Uh, so for those of you, for those of you Queens Gambit fans out there, uh, you can see her in both The Witch and in Split. How about that? Uh, I will say though, just as a uh, an offhand comment, uh, I think it's Glass, the sequel to Split. Really bad. Don't see it. I made the mistake of seeing it. Um, it's just, just not good. The Village, another M. Night Shyamalan film. And uh, again, kind of a weird choice for this list, but I didn't make it. The Village, I find The Village to be incredibly underrated. A lot of people will point to this movie as this is where M. Night Shyamalan uh, fell off. You know, they had The Sixth Sense, which for some reason isn't on this tier list. I would, The Sixth Sense, by the way, I would put an A were it on this list. Um, they're like, yeah, you know, he had this, uh, The Sixth Sense and then they had um, uh, Unbreakable and th those two were really good and then Signs was good, but like kind of not as good as the other ones. And then The Village sucked. I don't think The Village sucked. I think The Village is a victim of awful marketing because The Village was marketed as a monster movie. It was marketed as like, oh, these people in this like Amish village, they're being terrorized by these crazy monsters from the woods and they're, uh, holy crap, it's gonna be so scary. They're gonna have to hide in their homes while the monsters like prowl the village looking for victims. And that's not what the movie is at all. <clears throat> um, there is a twist that happens I would say about halfway through the movie. Um, it's not even like at the end or anything like that. Uh, so about like halfway through the movie, you're like, wait, this isn't what I thought it was at all. And some people took that really well um, and liked the movie and some people did not and they wrote it off forever. Um, I saw this in theaters and I was one of those people that was very, very disappointed when I found out that it was not what it was marketed as. Um, but upon rewatches, I've, I've rewatched it twice. I actually really like this movie. Um, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it in, in B tier. I actually really like the village. I think it's better. I think it's better than signs. First of all, I think it's, I think it's better than unbreakable. I've, I've rewatched unbreakable a couple times too. I, I think it's one of M. Night Shyamalan's best movies. Is it better than the sixth sense? No, but I think it's, I think it's one of his best movies. In fact, probably next to the sixth sense like his best one. Now, Lady in the Water, I would say that's the beginning of the end right there. That movie's crap in my opinion. But I really think this gets a bad rap. It's got good acting um, by, uh, let's see, Adrian Brody is in it. Uh, oh, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard in the main role. I mean, it's it's got good acting. I think it's got, you know, there, there, are, there are some moments where it just doesn't quite, the moment doesn't quite land uh, which is frustrating, and there's one too many twists in the movie. There's there's more than one, um, so you you go on quite the roller coaster ride with it. But I do have strong feelings about. It. I really think that people shit on this one too much. But anyway, it's not like I put it in S tier or anything. I don't feel like it's not like my favorite, but I just think that it gets kind of unfairly criticized. So those are my thoughts on the village, Psycho. 
Um, yeah. Put Psycho in, in A tier here. Psycho, uh, Alfred Hitchcock, I think it, it holds up incredibly well for being made in 1960, I believe, is when it was released. Psycho, uh, the first uh, slasher, arguably? Or I think, I think there might have been... There might have been like an Italian film or something that came before it. I can't really think. I I looked it up recently because I was curious about like, what was the first slasher film? Uh, Psycho, very good. Um, Alfred Hitchcock, possibly at his best. Some might prefer Vertigo, uh, which is also a great movie. Or like Rear Window. <sighs> Dude, if Rear Window was on this, mo on this list, that would get an S tier. Damn. Because that's, that's basically a horror movie. Watch Rear Window. If you haven't seen it, James Stewart. It's it's one of those... You have to kind of take into account that it was made 50 years ago, but it's it's really good. Psycho also, you know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. My bad. 60 years ago. Um, that is hard to believe. But Psycho, very good. I'm not going to say anything more about it. It's got the infamous shower scene, but... Even more than that, there's more to see. And if you've seen the shower scene, there's more in this movie uh, to surprise and amaze you. I do like Psycho. The Strangers, another home invasion horror movie. And I don't know what it is about home invasion horror movies, but they just feel so cheesy to me. The Strangers, I would keep in C tier here. Is it Liv Tyler that's in this movie, I think? Uh, I mean, it's it's got its moments. I don't like the ending. And I, I feel kind of hypocritical here because I feel like The Strangers is the opposite of Hush in a lot of ways. They're, they've got kind of the same premise, but they go about it tactically completely different. And I feel like there's a lot of mystery. There's like too much mystery with The Strangers. I don't quite resonate with it like I hoped I would. I've seen it three times, I think, because I keep wanting to like it more than I do. I just, it just feels kind of, uh, it feels, what's the word for it? When someone's getting like a weird kick out of it, it, it but it, it's, it doesn't serve much of a purpose other than that. I don't know what that word is. Anyway, The Baba Duke. Back to uh, the controversial echelon of films. Hereditary. It follows. Um, insidious. Uh, the Baba Duke. I, I would say The Baba Duke is a tier. Some people find this movie incredibly boring because it is so psychological. I, I, I. There's just. There's more to these horror movies sometimes than the the part where you get scared. And I think the Baba Duke it's it's about like the fears of raising a child alone. It's 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 about it's a movie that's about fear, you know? And again, I think this is one of those things where the movie was marketed in such a way that it seemed like it could be a monster film but really it's one of those movies it's like the monster is us and it, a lot of people didn't really <laughs> appreciate that aspect to it um the the sad truth about a lot of horror films is that they kind of have to be marketed as monster movies for mainstream audiences to actually see them because if you market it as like this is about a uh, a single mother's psychological torment and fears that she has to face raising her child you know it's that's not really for a lot of the mainstream casual horror crowd that's not exactly an exciting concept so it's more like look at the scary babadook but i i, I really think there's I, I really think what's under the surface of this movie is far more valuable than just another scary monster movie you know what happens when you get literally just a a monster movie, uh, you get crap like Dead Silence. And um, yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave that. Brain Dead, Brain Dead, Brain Dead, Brain Dead. It is, I believe, uh, let me just make sure that I've got the right movie here. Okay, I had to double check, I do. 
This is known as Dead Alive in America, and it's directed by Peter Jackson, who went on to direct Lord of the Rings. It is a zombie movie, but it is such a ridiculously campy romp full of over-the-top special effects, just like really Sam Raimi-esque uh, direction. It's got that like Evil Dead vibe to it, um, which I I know that we weren't going to talk about sequels, but just as like a weird like sun aside, I put Evil Dead in A tier. If Evil Dead 2 was on this tier list, I would put it S tier. I love that movie. It, it goes completely like full camp with it, Evil Dead 2. And I think Brain Dead is very similar. It's it's just it's so over the top camp like comedy horror. It's it's amazing and it all culminates in a final scene that has like a ridiculous amount of blood in it. It, it's such <coughs> it, it's such a unique movie and I, I I'm gonna put I, I don't know if I can bring myself to put it in S tier but I really like it I'm putting it in a um, it's so good again it's called dead alive in America I don't know why it's got a different uh, title but it's a really fun movie and if you can stomach body horror and gory practical effects uh, you should definitely check it out. It's really good. The Invisible Man, starring Elizabeth Moss. How far you've come since Mad Men. This one really surprised me. I saw this, um, I think last year. And it's... I, I haven't heard much fanfare about it. But I... The Invisible Man is very good. Um, it, the, the, it's the idea of... A woman trying to escape an abusive relationship and she thinks that her ex the abuser um, possesses a incredible like unknown technological device like an invisibility cloak and that he's stalking her and watching her and it um, really plays upon the fear of being a woman and the fear of abusive men, of stalkers, of, you know, someone watching you and you can't see them, you know, so it's it's got a lot of different elements to it. It's very effective. Uh, it, again, I, I mean, I, I think I said just now that I really enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's not quite an enjoyable experience. Uh, because it does have some very heavy themes to it, but it's very, very good. I I liked it a lot, and I, I recommend it. Thoroughly recommend it. It's one of the better ones, better horror movies to come out in recent years. Jaws. We would be remiss to not mention Jaws. Jaws A. Come on. Some people would be like, why isn't it S? What's wrong with you? It's Jaws. Again, it's just it's that Spielbergian thing. That I, that I talked about earlier with with Poltergeist. I just I like Spielberg like Jurassic Park Like top five movies favorite movies for me uh, mostly just because of the dinosaur effects though and Jeff Goldblum and just the I mean That's a whole nother issue, but uh, the Jaws is a horror movie um, I mean it's it's big mean shark, you know, so I just just based on on that premise I can't be like, holy crap, it belongs up there with the thing for me. Um, but it is a classic for a reason. We're gonna need a bigger boat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Big Mean Shark terrorizes um, the populace and they try to do something about it. And of course, it's got that iconic soundtrack. Yeah, you know, there's just not that much more to say about it. It's one of those movies that you don't really need to go in depth on. It, it's, it's called Jaws. It's about a big mean shark kills people, they try to kill it. It's a Moby Dick situation. Fun movie. Classic for a reason. Carrie. Carrie, the um, the original. 1970s. Carrie, starring Sissy Spacek um, as Carrie. This is based on a Stephen King story, and it is a, a movie about bullying and not fitting in and all that high school bullshit that we left behind. Most of us, at least. Hopefully, 
you know, if you're still in high school, good luck to you. But um, yeah, Carrie, um, I'm gonna put it in B tier. It, it's it's a movie that's carried, no no pun intended, by the payoff. It has, I mean, it's got it's got like the payoff scene on the poster here. Everyone knows like how Carrie ends. It can only end one way, and you see it coming the entire time you're watching the movie. And when it hits, it hits hard, and it, it delivers. I like Carrie. Not much more to say about it. It's just one of those movies that's full catharsis, full payoff. The Omen. The old Omen movie starring Gregory Peck. This is a movie about... Um, a family who has the, oh, is it the son of Satan or is it Satan himself as their child? Um, yeah, it's, it, this is a creepy movie. It's pretty old now. It's 1970s. I have to put it A tier though. It's, of course, it's, it's a movie that really hyperbolizes the fear of your child not turning into the person that you want them to be or that anyone would want them to be in this case you know by making the child be like literal satan spawn but it uh it does play it's it's another movie it's similar kind of to the baba duke a little bit um in that it really it, it plays upon like parental fears and you know maybe it's not something that quite resonates with you when you haven't had kids, I mean, I, I talk like that. I haven't had kids either. But I, I imagine maybe it's it's got more of a scare factor for people that are our parents. And there's a lot of movies like this. It's like Rosemary's Baby and, you know, we have to talk about Kevin. You know, it's like having a, a kid that um, is evil. So... You know, there's, there's lots of cool things in it. There's like demon dogs and it's got Gregory Peck. Come on. How can you be mad at a movie that stars Gregory Peck? House of a Thousand Corpses. This is Rob Zombie's uh, first horror film. And, and it's part of a trilogy followed by The Devil's Rejects, um, which is quite an exploitative film. <laughs> uh, I would put it in, in B. It's, it's one of these movies about... You know, teenagers on a road trip, and then they run into like uh, a crazy bunch of hicks that want to kill them. It stars, oddly enough, it stars um, Rain Wilson from The Office, the guy who plays Dwight. Uh, odd. It's it's before The Office, so it's it's a little weird seeing him in a movie like this. Uh, I think it's got some really cool. It, it's it's like my favorite Rob Zombie movie. I think you really kind of. I don't want to say he fell off after this, but just I think it's got this kind of raw amateurish quality to it that is missing from some of his more slickly produced films that he came out with later. And I really like some of the final scenes with the labyrinth and Dr. Satan and stuff. It really goes over the top. So yeah, House of Thousand Corpses B for me. Goosebumps. Why is this on this? <laughs> Why is this on the tier list? Goosebumps is um, a movie that came out. You know what? I'm just not gonna tear this. Why would I tear this? It's it's a comedy movie. It's not a horror movie. It's not scary. It's not serious. It's like Troll 2, man. Except it's not intentionally bad. Well, I mean, I guess I teared Gremlins, but I feel like that has kind of a different feel to it. Anyway. Goosebumps is a movie that came out recently starring Jack Black and um, uh, Jack's son from Lost. I can never remember his name. I just remember him as Jack's son from Lost. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a movie about Arl Stein and Arl Stein's Goosebumps creations becoming real, including uh, the iconic Slappy the Dummy. I enjoyed Goosebumps for what it was which was kind of just a nostalgic, uh, fun romp into 90s children's horror books. Um, I, I can't tear this, though. I'm gonna, I just wanted to talk about it real quick. All right. Misery, starring Kathy Bates. Another Stephen King 
um, adaptation. And I mean, that can it go anywhere else? Have you seen it? Uh, this is a film about a man who is a famous author, and he is, he can, he meets a fan. That is all I will say about it. If you've not seen Misery, that is all I will say about it. Um, incredible performance, though, by Kathy Bates in that movie. Notoriously so. Lights Out. Um, I will be honest. I saw Lights Out. And I remember so little of it that I can't, like, justifiably put it anywhere above C. C or above. It... I think, I think from what I remember, it was a movie about, um, a uh, ghost spirit, malevolent being that, uh, could only, like, move around and do stuff with the lights out. So, you had to keep the lights on, but it would actually go and it would flip the switch and turn them off. <laughs> it, uh, I just, I just didn't like it. It just did nothing for me. It's like it ended and I was like, eh, yeah, okay. Some people really liked it. It got good reviews. I heard good things about it. I mean, it had lots of jump scares. Sometimes, you know, I think for a lot of people, it's posturing with horror movies and they're like, in horror games, and they're like, at least it just, it doesn't have, it doesn't rely on cheap jump scares, but then they like stuff that just has a ton of jump scares in it and not much else. But maybe some people are saying that about some of the movies that I highly praised. I don't know. Everybody's got an opinion. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's why I'm going to put lights out. And actually, that's those are all the movies on this tier list I want to talk about. There's more that they have, but um, that's all I want to talk about. Some of the some of the selections are kind of weird. Like Leprechaun 2 is on here. I don't know why. Um, there's what, like Freddy versus Jason? I don't know. Twilight Breaking Dawn? You know, like I said, I'm kind of restricted by whatever tier list I have chosen, but uh, I think this covered like most of the horror movies that I would like to talk about in a tier list, so I'm happy. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. There's not anything that I would like put in S tier that's not on here already, I don't think. Like maybe there's some A tier choices. Um, like there's a, there's a movie I watched recently called caveat on shutter that um i really liked and i would put it in like b tier you know like there's some there's some little ones like that that i would like to put you know populate some of these tiers with one thing that uh i'm appreciative for is that there aren't there weren't a whole lot of like crap movies on this tier list so the d and f tiers are very like sparsely populated there's no there's no like ghost ship or like White Noise, ugh. I don't know if any of you guys have seen that movie with Michael Keaton. I believe it was White Noise. But that might have been, that might be like the worst horror movie I've ever seen. Literally like nothing happens in it. It's so, so bad. So they didn't have uh, movies like that on this list. So I didn't really have to ding, a, ding that many of them except for this. I hate that movie. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video of me going through a bunch of iconic horror movies. Uh, most of the ones that I think are fairly well known and ranking them and giving my thoughts on them. I've been asked a lot about things like this over the years, so uh, let me know what you thought. And I know we're going to disagree on some things, but hopefully you remain civil on it. And hopefully you don't leave condescending bullshit in my comment section about how I'm an idiot for not putting Jaws and S tier or something like that. Because it's just my opinion and I'm sure that, you know, if you were to make your own tier list, you would probably rank things a lot lower that I'd be like, how could you? How could you put Alien in C tier? I know you people are out there. I don't know who you are and I don't understand you, but I know you're out there. Um, so yeah, let me know what you thought, and thanks again to Shudder for sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Think critically.